from Southeast Kansas. I'm Captain JLS, and this is a momentous episode of this Robotech thing. <laughs> Faithful viewers, subscribers, and such, um, first of all, as usual, I have to roll out the apology for, you know, there not being a new episode for like the past year. Then again, as so many people seem to say on Twitter, you know, like this past year's been rough. And, uh, you know, the fact that I'm still standing here to record this right now, and, uh, you know, I still have, have a job and a roof over my head, um, you know, I mean, there's that, that is in and of itself is a miracle. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that said, I feel like all of you at home had to know that I could not let the events of, well, apparently the events of March to the 1st, but the sudden information drop of Thursday, April 8th, uh, go unremarked. This is a video that had to be done. This is a video that absolutely, I uh, critically, had to do, and I was going to actually do it over the weekend, but then I saw, ah, ah, Tommy's going to be talking to uh, Seamus Kelly of the uh, RoboSkull podcast for the Wasabi anime Twitch stream about this tonight. Um, yeah, it is a Monday night as I'm recording this. Um, you know, it's probably going to flip to uh, midnight. Uh, sometime during the recording session here, and I'll be up editing this for a bit. Um, <clears throat> but, so I watched most of that video, and uh, also saw some, uh, you know, commentary on some of the questions that were then subsequently asked. But I think, I, yeah, at this point I have enough of a grasp of exactly the nitty-gritty of how this all kind of works, uh, you know, to, to shoot a video and uh, present it to you fine folks. Let's get into what happened. Let's actually get into what happened. So, Harmony Gold, USA, and Big West in Japan have reached an accord where Big West now 100% accepts as legitimate Harmony Gold's international distribution and merchandising rights to Super Dimension Fortress Macross, the original 1982-83, 36-episode Macross television show. At the same time, uh, Harmony Gold, as the possessor of the Macross trademark in the United States and you know, elsewhere in the world, um, is basically telling Big West, they can go ahead and, you know, through local partners, distribute uh, the Macross sequels and spin-offs, uh, which start with 1984's Macross Do You Remember Love, and continues all the way through a Macross Delta movie that I believe is supposed to be out this year. Um, and uh, merchandise in their own. And as such, they will uh, be, you know, uh, to an extent, partnering in cross-promoting and uh, supporting each other's releases thereof. So, this all, they also, also, the, uh, Folks at Big West have said that uh, they will not be a barrier. They will not, uh, you know, put up a wall. They will not prevent, uh, and in fact, will promote uh, the Sony uh, Robotech live action movie in Japan when it does indeed come to pass. So this is, a, this is of course, mind blowing because for years everybody had sort of assumed. It was Harmony Gold 
holding on to the Macross trademark in the US and other places across the globe that was preventing Big West from uh, actually getting any Macross out. Now, very smart people like uh, Justin Savakis, uh, formerly of Anime News Network, uh, you know, and uh, Mike Toole, editor at large of uh, Anime News, News Network. You know, these guys had gone in, you know, talked to a bunch of industry people and, you know, said, no, actually, the, the Macross rights situation is such a giant mess that it's not just Harmony Gold standing in the way of these things coming out. Uh, in fact, um, in tonight's live stream, uh, they were specifically talking about this is the this is sort of the big one that a lot of the old school anime nerds want. It's you know, Macross the movie. Do you remember love? This is this is my Blu-ray copy. It uh, comes of course from Japan. Has no translation on it, but that's okay because this is just such a stunningly beautiful movie. You know, I can just sit back and and let the the audio visuals wash over me and. God knows, I know the story to this movie backwards and forwards. You know, I remember back in the 90s downloading a translated script and printing it off, you know, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, before I even had a copy of, of the film to watch myself. So, well, I mean, that said, you know, not everybody, you know, knows this backwards and forwards. Not everybody is comfortable sitting there for two hours watching a language they don't understand. They want a copy of the movie that they can enjoy. And, you know, you've got multiple uh, production partners and distributors on that. And, you know, that's going to take some time to work out. But the emphasis that uh, McKeever and Yoon were making throughout the live stream was, these things take time. Now, everybody's putting a certain amount of pressure because of the wording of the document, the wording of the press release, which said, as of March 1st, you know, Big West is allowed immediate distribution. The word immediate is in the document. So everybody's thinking, oh, this is all going to happen immediately. And, uh, you know, yes, McKeever and Yoon... Uh, don't actually address that elephant in the room and sort of walk around the elephant and, you know, do their usual sort of, uh, you know, mealy mouth obfuscating nonsense and say, well, you know, I'm, you know, these things take time. They don't clearly and directly go, yes, we know the document says immediate. We know that. But, you know, the deals are not in place yet. I mean, a simple, clear, direct, you know, remark like that, uh, you know, would have been appreciated. But from the remarks, you can you can get there. You can get there. It's fine. It's fine. Um, you know, there are other things that they said that I think were less fine. But you know, uh, we'll we'll address those in short order. Um, In fact, let's go ahead and to one of the things that was not addressed. Um, you know, Kel Seamus Kelly, to his credit, you know, goes right out and says, Why now? Why now? And uh, Yoon and McKeever don't actually say why now. Considering the fact that the Sony Robotech movie is directly mentioned in the press release, suspicions are high, I think, that that is key to all of this. That um, whether it be on Sony's end of things, you know, wanting to actually be able to build out another big tentpole franchise for them, uh, you know, Sony basically has Ghostbusters and Jumanji and Spider-Man as their big tent poles right now. And they would like one more. A big science fiction franchise would look really good in their portfolio. You know, they don't have one of those. Whether it be on Sony's end or as, uh, you know, my, my, you know, dear old uh, 
fellow, uh, you know, Robotech, form, fellow former Robotech blogger, um, you know, uh, Darkwater was, was saying to me, uh, sort of to me on Facebook, you know, sort of refuting something I was saying to that extent. Um, you know, Frank Agrama is, is getting on in years. Frank Agrama is a very old man. And Frank Agrama would probably like to see the Robotech movie actually happen in his lifetime. He would like his movie. And uh, Harmony Gold might, you know, have wanted to uh, move heaven and earth to the extent that they could to get Frank his movie. So both of these are equally plausible in my mind, you know, that a large part of this was to get the movie made. Now, Japan is a giant movie market. They love their big, dumb Hollywood movies in Japan. Sony, being themselves a Japanese company, would like to have their big, dumb Hollywood version of Robotech slash Macross uh, be available in their backyard to make money off of their home market. And, you know, probably because they would like to actually go out and see it in a theater <laughs> themselves. You know? So, you know, getting it, getting things to a point where that could actually happen meant getting the Harmony Gold Big West situation resolved. On top of that. Now, one thing that uh, Kevin and Tommy were making abundantly clear is that the rights that Big West was affirming here on their end were merchandising rights. They've said that numerous times. They're merchandising rights. Um, I wonder if Harmony Gold would have argued in court <laughs> that the live-action movie rights fall under merchandising. Because when asked if the live-action movie um, is sort of subject to that, if, uh, you know, the trick there is that until this was resolved, the Hollywood movie could not use the designs from Macross. Yeah, Tommy goes, you know, I mean, you know full well the movie people are going to redesign the Valkyrie, right? And it's not like, you know, whatever Hollywood actors they pick to play the roles are Haruhiko Mikimoto's character designs. Which, I mean, are fair points, but at the same time, um, uh, I kind of feel like they're going to try and avoid a sort of, um, how should I say, uh, a sort of uh, Michael Bay Transformers situation where everybody takes a look at uh, the movie designs and goes, What? Are you seeing this? You know, I expect that they're going to want to do Shoji Kawamori and Kazutaka Miyatake proud. And that could get, you know, things into some thorny legal business, which brings me back to, do they really think this is going to fall into merchandising? I don't know. Um, I just don't know. So, the thought I did have, of course, is that now that everything is sort of cleared up here, you know, Big West and Harmony Gold sort of have each, have, you know, a bat phone to one another. Um, you know, I wonder if just to make things, you know, squeaky clean, you know, I don't think anything precludes Sony from also reaching some kind of, you know, clearance accord with Big West. In fact, I don't think 
if for some reason, say, in future Robotech storytelling, in a televisual format, you know, they, uh, they need a flashback to the Macross era. You know, I could see, you know, a, another sort of agreement on top of, you know, their current agreement that allows a Harmony Gold and whatever studio they're working with animation wise, you know, to use those designs now. Here's where things get a little thorny. I think I, I think I understand. I think I understand this based on, you know, watching the live stream, based on, you know, you know, skimming the uh, the agreement. Um, so let's say Bandai knocks out another production run of these. Yeah. The uh, Bandai good old VF-19 from Macross 7. Harmony Gold don't got shit to do with that. Um, that is a, that is a Big West and Bandai thing. And then, uh, you know, Harmony Gold will, of course, you know, um, talk about it on their Twitter feed. They might even stock it in the Robotech store. Um... But that is a that is a big West and Bandai thing, and uh, that would that presumably you know be just straight up you know released through Bluefin, um, and you know you can order that from Big Bad Toy Store or uh, Dorkside Toys or Amazon or, or wherever, which is going to be great, honest goodness. You know this is the end. This marks the end of. What I was complaining about last year when I was talking about the high metal R's, um, you know, this, you know, no longer are we going to be sitting there on like three, you know, Japanese hobby sites, you know, uh, just waiting for the precise moment for these things to drop and then having to, you know, all scramble to grab them. Now, let's say we're talking about the VF1. Let's say we're talking about literally any version of the VF1 at this point. Because of the fact that um, Big West has affirmed those rights, you know, for merchandising to Harmony Gold, uh, then Bandai or Arcadia or, you know, any of the kit manufacturers do need to be directed to Harmony Gold. And they will handle that, that licensing. You know, I would assume, like, now, this is where things get tricky. You get something like the uh, um, Messer Colors Anniversary VF1. Uh, you know, so that's the character from Macross Delta, the color scheme from Macross Delta, the, the emblem from Macross Delta, but it is the VF1 design. I would assume then that that product needs to be licensed from both Harmony Gold and Big West. This would also uh, take effect when they, this sort of a situation would need to, would uh, presumably take effect with any sort of uh, Macross anniversary product or like a Super Robot Wars game that included, uh, say, TV Macross and uh, Macross Plus, like, uh, like uh, <coughs> excuse me, Super Robot Wars Alpha Gaiden. Um, actually, that doesn't include TV Macross. That does include uh, Macross Do You Remember Love. But uh, some of the designs from TV Macross do show up, I think, like specifically... Um, Elmeria in a uh, UN Space uniform, you know, because she's never in a UN Space uniform in the TV series. So that would require both parties' uh, licenses, I would assume. So that's where things get a little, hmm, yeah. One question that's come up is. What about all of these Macross sequels and spin-offs and remakes and whatnot? 
What about the form they will take when they come over? Uh, will Harmony Gold themselves you know, get involved in the licensing and make them into part of Robotech? This is something that I, I distinctly remember, you know, um, like 15 years ago, speaking with Tommy Yoon about at a convention. Um, and you know, he was certainly open to it then, and he seemed open to it now. Uh, which is funny, because in, you know, he's talking about it on this live stream, and not 10, 15, whatever minutes earlier, you know, uh, Seamus is asking about, well, you know, does this uh, accord clear you guys to use the Robotech or the, the Macross designs in future Robotech animation. And he uh, gets all, well, you know, I kind of feel like the fact that, you know, we couldn't, uh, you know, kind of free up Robotech to be its own thing, you know, in, in terms of, you know, what the Sentinels became and what, uh, the sh you know, what, what was done to, like, Rick's character design in the Shadow Chronicles. You know, which is all well and good, but then, you know, in on, on the same live stream, he says, sure, we could, you know, take Macross, you know, one of the Macross sequels and beat it into Robotech shape. Why not? Um, you know, who knows what the future holds? Um, now, me personally, one, as long as, you know, the original version is available, I think this is a fun idea. It is a fun and enjoyable and entertaining idea. Um, I honestly think that Harmony Gold's been holding the door open to this for years. Notice how back in uh, Prelude to the Shadow Chronicles, the comic book series that um, you know the Waltrips and Omar Dogen made, you know, um, in advance of the Shadow Chronicles movie, Max and Miria don't show up. I have always, always, always assumed that was them sort of holding the door open to you know, have Macross 7, Max, and Myriad suddenly show up. Um, I, in fact, at, at one point, remember distinctly in 2007, no, 2006, probably, you know, scrawling out a doodle of, uh, you know, Captain Max from Macross 7 and, uh, you know, uh, Shadow Chronicles Rick back-to-back, -back, you know, uh, just, uh, just to have some fun there. But, uh, you know, um, like, one of my big wants, one of my big wants... Um, you know, for this is to get a version of this movie with the Robotech cast dubbing it. You know, to get those actors <clears throat> to do those characters one more time. Those characters as they appeared in the 1980s. And, like, in my mind, Okay, and this, this, is, this is just me, and, you know, you can disagree with the notion all you want, but in my mind, like, the ideal way to do it, okay, would be to literally do a faithful dub, except, you know, you just sort of find replace the names and use the Robotech names, you know, you're using the Japanese proto, uh, def, you know, Macross de definition of protoculture. You know, you're you're faithfully doing all of the dialogue. You know, you just just use the Robotech names. You know, um, and and that's that version of, of the movie. Even if they don't do my suggestion and you know, change all the names around to match the characters that you know we associate the the character names we associate those voices with. Those actors, I want Oliver and McQueen and, and uh, you know, Rebecca Forstadt and, and Dan Warren, Richard Epcar, Cam Clark, you know, um, get all of those folks, uh, Greg Finley, Greg Finley, um, get all those folks back to do a dub of, uh, of the movie. That, I mean, between that and the Blu-ray of um, Macross 7, I mean... I'd be pretty set for a bit. Um, you know, the thing is, like, Macross 7 is one of the first two shows I ever watched uh, fan subbed on VHS, you know, on uh, copies knocked off from uh, somebody who worked at the local anime shop. 
um, you know, and like Escaflone, I've been afforded the opportunity to buy on home video a couple of times. You know, I have a nice Blu-ray set of that, you know, that I can watch. I, uh, I don't. I've not been afforded any opportunity in, uh, in this market to buy Macross 7. I want to buy Macross 7. I want it. And, it, you know, at long last, it seems like that's actually going to be a reality. You know, these are these are strange and wonderful times we live in that this has finally been sorted out. It's like I've been telling everyone, everyone who will listen, you know, it feels to me like suddenly somebody just tells me, you know, gravity. Gravity's just not going to be a thing anymore. This fundamental force in the universe just no longer exists. You know, this, uh, this... Uh, disharmony and discord that has been going on since Big West tried to give Toycom a license to make Macross toys in the late 90s is, uh, is over. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. So, um, at this point in the proceedings, I'm going to say, you know, if uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, you know, uh, musings, um, you know, absolutely just, you know, go ahead and start, uh, you know, uh, filing them in the comments here. Uh, I would actually like now to talk about a few other things that have uh, been going on in the Robotech land, you know, in the last year or thereabouts. You probably are well aware of the first Robotech Masters volume from Titan that came out. Um, this is a wonderful edition. Um, you know, it doesn't have any of the sort of uh, minor, major-ish <laughs> reproduction problems the Sentinels book had. You know, it looks, it looks fantastic. It's got, you know, sketches from Neil folks in it. Um, like, literally the only problem I saw is, you know, uh, the, they use the formatting from one of their uh, trade paperbacks of their own series. So they do have the line, uh, Titan Comics now bring you a new take on the Robotech story with twists and differences, where this is, you know, the original 1980s take on the material uh, originally presented by Kamiko. But other than that, uh, you know, reuse of uh, an incorrect line... Uh, you know, this really is a wonderful edition, and you should own it. Um, now, uh, Tommy did actually talk a little about the Titan situation right now, as it stands. And he said that uh, right now, right this very minute, uh, because a lot of the licenses, a whole lot of licenses were, um, were up in March. Because if you'll recall, March was sort of the big um, Harmony Gold doomsday. That was when uh, the Tatsunoko agreement was going, you know, the previous Tatsunoko agreement expired. You know, certainly in the year beating time, you know, between, you know, when we found out that was a thing that was going to happen. And now, as usual, they re-upped that agreement. We don't know the terms. Uh, I mean, we don't know the term length. Um, you know, I mean, you, you can certainly be, feel free to speculate. You can go back into the uh, documentation from, you know, the various lawsuits and look at the length of the, the terms then. But we don't have a, a drop-dead date on this one. Uh, but uh, I assume because of that, a lot of agreements between Harmony Gold and its licensees were set to expire at that date. That's why Robotech is no longer streaming everywhere that the way, you know, the way it was. That's why Robotech is, uh, that's why the Robotech novels are no longer available digitally. Um, and that means the Titan, uh, contract apparently is also up. Um, I think it was last week, uh, they did a live stream with Wasabi Anime about toys. Um, and like the guy from Mep Toys, you know, the, the, the outfit that made the, um, that, uh, Britai figure, uh, a bit ago. 
and they were going to do the Invid Scout uh, last year, and then COVID happened, and the uh, and the fact that it was going to do it got repurposed for you know um, you know protective shielding for COVID. Um, you know, he was just talking about how he just had to re-up his contract with Harmony Gold. Um, and he's going forward and he's getting his Invid Scout done and he's also doing an Invid Trooper to go with it, which is awesome. And, you know, I, I, I will buy every Invid that you will sell me. Um, but so Titan has to, you know, re-up their contract. Only this time right now they are re-upping through Funimation. Apparently a lot of this licensing is now going through Funimation. It's going, you know, around Harmony Gold. Harmony Gold is doing, you know, they're, they're dealing with other things. Funimation has, you know, Funimation is a much larger company. They're handling the licensing shit. So the assumption is, of course, everything's going to be fine. And uh, they're going to get, uh, you know, their next books uh, on the road. Um, which include, right now, um, on uh, Amazon, you can already pre-order their second Sentinels trade paperback. And then a little birdie on Facebook... Uh, pointed out, um, uh, bookdepository.com has a listing for Robotech Remix Volume 2 um, with a date of March 2022. Now, Robotech Remix Volume 1 came out last March. And so you work out the timing there. And... You know, uh, based on when those comics came out and then that trade paperback came out, uh, you can assume maybe we might see Robotech Remix come back in October. Assuming the date holds on that listing. You know, of course, things can definitely change. You know, we've seen dates shift before. This was supposed to come out a lot earlier than it did. Sentinels was supposed to come out a lot earlier than it did. So, well, we'll see how it all goes. That's just the data that's available to all of us right now. Um, so this is a funny thing. This, uh, this is a terrific Haruhiko Mikimoto character design art book. Now, it features uh, Mikimoto's designs from most of the animation projects he's worked on in his career. It includes uh, several video games. It includes, of course, uh, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress from about five years ago. Uh, Titania. Let me see. Actually, no, I, I said about five years ago. Let me double check. Yeah, no, that's actually five years ago. That was 2016. Uh, Titania from uh, 2008. Um... You know, it's got some Megazone 2 3 stuff in there. It's, but, you know, of course. Um, and uh, Gunbuster. No Macross, of course. Which makes it now feel almost immediately like a relic of a bygone era. There's like 40 pages, uh, based on page count, um, you know, not in here that are in the original Japanese edition of this book. Um, but this is the English language version. It includes, you know, notes from Mikimoto, an introduction by Mikimoto. Um, and it really is just a, just a handsome volume uh, overall. But I do think it is just funny that I got this on the 6th and the big um, Harmony Gold, Big West Accord, you know, comes out literally two days later. And, you know, then I go, so might we see a second edition of this book that includes the missing Macross pages? Who knows? Who knows, people? Um, speaking of uh, art books, I know that uh, people already have, people right now have the Udon Southern Cross art book in their grubby little mitts. I still have yet to order mine, and, uh, you know, once I do, I'll uh, update y'all, um, and, uh, you know, we'll let you know what I think of it. Uh, thing I did, of course, get in is the wonderful Animago Blu-ray release of Megazone 2-3. That includes Megazone 2-3 parts 1, 2, and 3, um, as well as uh, multiple commentary tracks, documentary, you know, galleries, 
uh, you know, I got the premium one. Comes in a nice chipboard box. Comes with a translated art book and uh, a little manga here no, from. Um, No, this is this yeah no this is the liner notes and the manga you know with uh you know a lot of trivia and uh this of course includes the english dubs uh done by adv films as well as the english dubbed versions of one and two done by uh carl masek through streamline pictures the uh, you know, part one dub which was previously available on dvd through image entertainment um as well as the international version of part two, uh, which uh, renames the main character Johnny Winters. Um, now, of course, the great thing about, the great thing about the old Masek dub of part one is if you've watched or are familiar with um, Robotech the Untold Story, he uses the exact same cast, um, by and large. You know, I think a few like minor roles were you know, recast with other... Uh, <clears throat> Robotech slash Streamline regulars. But he uses the same cast and you know, actually lets them do a mostly faithful uh, version of the film. Um, I saw somebody on uh, one of the Facebook groups, you know, say, well, I didn't really like Robotech the Untold Story. I thought it was a waste of time. You know, why, why should I be interested in this? Um, and, I, and I had to, you know, I and a couple of other people had to chime in and say, you don't understand. <laughs> the plot's completely different. Tangentially to this, uh, in the live stream, uh, Seamus asked uh, Tommy and Kevin about Megazone 2-3 and about Robotic the Untold Story. And Tommy tells the story about how when ADV Films had both Robotech and Megazone 2-3, they tried to clear up all of the legal kerfluffles in order to release Robotech the Movie The Untold Story on DVD. And he blames the implosion of ADV. Now the fact of the matter is, I remember transcribing Robotech the Movie when Tom Bateman was still working for them uh, around... I want to say this was the summer of 2006. ADV didn't implode for another two years. Now, I know that legal hurdles can be difficult. But I also know full well, ADV had the rights at that point. Um, and, you know, this... And, you know, there was certainly some major awareness because the, like, the thing I got in exchange for that, the one real piece of payment other than comp copies I ever got from anybody for a Harmony Gold project was, you know, I got the Yamato Garland toy, which, of course, the Yamato Garland toy um, very infamously had those shoulder joints that cracked. And, you know, they completely disintegrated within, like, two years. So, you know, I, mean, I was just carrying around this, you know, broken garland for, for several years until I finally was able to, um, you know, because of so many things, uh, you know, get rid of it on eBay. Um, so I suppose technically, like, my payment was, you know, whatever that person paid for a broken toy on eBay. <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, given that, but given that timetable, I'm, I, I sort of, you know, look at that with a little... It was the it was the the collapse of ADV that did it. I kind of wonder if you know some other sort of you know residual legal thing you know might actually have been the problem, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You know, again, I'm just relating the things I know based on you know uh, my recollections of, of events. Um, anyway, um, so that's all the stuff I have off to the side here right now. <laughs> um, and I think I've gone pretty well through my thoughts and you know, what I know about the whole hullabaloo. Um, so programming notes here. Um, so now that I've got this done and uh, I can, uh, I've, I'm, I'm putting this up and uh, this should be up 
uh, Tuesday morning. Um, you know, I think I'm probably going to try and get back on track again. Um, probably try to, you know, um, I'm going to be taking a little bit of time to uh, work on the setup with the turbo graphics. So I still intend to go back to, you know, do some videos about turbo graphics and stuff um, because, you know, it's, um, it's fun. Um, and it, you know, gives me reason to, you know, get on eBay and buy uh, PC Engine games. Um, but <laughs> I, in fact, have bought a, a Turbo Graphics game, you know, for for the thing this year. Um, but uh, for the meantime, we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna try and get back into the habit of, um, you know, doing uh, this Robotech thing episodes. I'm gonna get back to the Titan Comics run, and I'll sit down and I'll read some of those comics. And uh, so the next time. Uh, I'll be in front of this camera, um, which I might, you know, uh, hold off, um, you know, and, and wait till May. It'll be very late April, probably more likely to be May. Um, I'll be talking about, uh, you know, uh, eight issues of, you know, the post Brian Wood uh, Titan Comics Robotech. And, you know, at the right things are going, I think I'm still going to be done with uh, talking about the uh, the Titan Comics run uh, before Titan starts publishing new Robotech comics again. So, um, so thank you for watching. Thank you again for your patience. And I hope to see you again soon. Uh, this is Captain JLS, signing off.